contactless payments, AI-based physical and mental recovery recommendations, plus the huge amount of features, tracked workouts and phenomenal battery life. Did Amazfit finally achieve the perfect smartwatch balance? Let's inspect! Hey, nice to meet you smartwatch fans and dear tech enthusiasts! I'm the Tech Mishka and as usual here on the channel we expect a lot of cool and interesting tech with today's focus being on the so-called balance by Amazfit. I'm not really sure this name is really suitable for a smartwatch because when you google around for it you're gonna mostly see way scales. But this smartwatch happens to have a lot of improvements and pretty much everything that it takes to be among the best of 2023. So, this video is about exposing all its strong, weak sides, figuring out whether there are any corners cut, and finding out whether this really is the perfect 2023 smartwatch. Well, the price definitely somewhat contributes to the positive vibes. $249 is about the same as what Huawei asked for their GT4. It costs less than most Wear OS-based solutions of 2023 and less than the famous Apple Watch series. Garmin's functional variations happen to also be a bit more expensive, so good to see what we actually get in return. A good-looking pack as a starter. Due to the goal to reduce the carbon footprint, almost all manufacturers are now competing to design nature-friendlier boxes. Some of the important highlights are already noted, but I'm a bit surprised that Amazfit didn't put the spotlight on this one huge new feature we were all waiting for. So here's the watch. There are two color options at the time I make the review. Hopefully some more fun variations to appear soon or later. Design-wise, I very much like what I see and feel. Okay, probably almost everything, because the display is a bit exposed due to the height of the bezel but it's much prettier than most other solutions and feels slimmer. A rotating crown and a button on the side, sensors on the back, these are meant to track your health status, the lugs are metal-made, quick-release 22mm straps, well, that's a very good balance for a starter. If we take a look at the specs, there are some more interesting news. Aluminium alloy middle frame, fiber reinforced polymer bottom shell, a 1.5 inch AMOLED display protected by tempered glass, there's 475 mAh battery providing up to 14 days normal usage per charge, BioTracker 5.0 PPG biometric sensor, 6 band global positioning system support, an NFC chip, a lot of additional health and motion tracking sensors, the operating system is Zep OS 2.0, and the way of the watch is 35 grams without a strap. So the big news this time is the availability of one particular app called ZepPay, because with a double press of this rotating crown you can launch this very same app and you can make contactless payments. And yes, there is NFC chip, that's a global version, so there's a very good chance that you would be able to make contactless payments finally available with an Amazfit device, but there's a little catch. If you remember, Amazfit started as one of those Xiaomi sub-brands, and going back in time, a couple of years ago, when I was reviewing the Xiaomi Smart Bands 6 and 7, the NFC versions, their Xiaomi Pay service was supporting only Maestro and MasterCards, and uh, over here it's the very same limitation. If you live in Europe, I guess you can use the service called Curve, which has a free subscription plan, and you can overcome this limitation because Curve offers the option to kind of bypass this thing and present itself as a MasterCard, whereas you can use a Visa or Amex card in the background. And I'm not paid to say this, it just happens to work with me. Um, other than that, the smartwatch is really well built, has very decent materials used, the performance is very good, the health tracking makes me promise to be blazing good and accurate, and also the workout tracking. So our task is to start exploring the software and figure out whether that's true or not. Two physical buttons, the bigger one is a rotating crown at the same time, quite functional and very Apple Watch-like. Probably Samsung should try such one as well. Press it once and it opens the app list or goes back to the home screen. Press it twice and it's going to execute the action that you need. By default, opening the Zep Pay app. Workouts are quickly accessed via the secondary button or you can reach to most of this menu via swipes and taps. There are, as usual for Amazfit, beautifully designed cards and widgets, quick toggles, access to the notifications and so on. 
The interface is responsive, fluid, rich on functions and customizations, maybe some of them not as advanced as what you'd get from Wear OS or Watch OS, but generously a lot for a smartwatch which can last two weeks per single battery charge. Well, around six days with scheduled AOD in my case, and I feel that it can last much longer with a simple gesture to wake the display up via lifting the wrist. There's already a battery saver mode and some details about the consumption integrated in the settings menu, alongside with many other customization features, of course. The amount of the default apps is also generous. We can find such for the various tracked health parameters. This would include heart rate, SpO2 tracking, sleep and stress tracking. There are different productivity tools, such as a calendar app, a countdown timer, a stopwatch and so on. The newly integrated Aures service is here as well, with soothing melodies enhancing your sleeping. Subscription-based, you get a free trial, though. I hoped it's gonna take a bit longer before we see paid add-ons by Amazfit, but, well, time is sticking. Hundreds of colorful and beautiful watch faces are present too, the defaults are quite functional, and these that you can find additionally inside the Zep smartphone app are also worth checking. I would recommend checking the Amaze Faces app in that regard, it's backed by Ukrainian developers, and I feel it's the right time to support these guys as much as possible. I know that many of you would ask about the sensor's accuracy and responsiveness, the lift wrist gesture works flawlessly, step tracking and calorie counters are about right, sleep tracking is very accurate too, excellent optimization and it manages to fetch each and every time I wake up at night. Heart rate is properly measured and we have the option to pull this information on a regular basis every 1, 5, 10 or 30 minutes or continuously by downloading an extra app and this of course would consume more battery. The workout tracking is also splendid. Here you can once again take advantage of the Zep Coach feature introduced with the Cheetah model earlier this year. This seems to be the very same kind of GPS implementation, namely six band global positioning systems supported and specially developed antenna technology to provide much better communication with the positioning satellites. And I hereby confirm that it is fast, reliable and very accurate. You can see the details of my workouts, where besides my pulse and training sectors, you can well see the route and it's having close to zero deviations from the reality. You can use some basic navigation features, but there's some preparation work necessary to be done, so it's not as effective as Google Maps or Waze, but perfectly usable in case you want to import routes or follow them during workouts. There are many other features available too, and a growing database of apps inside the Zep Store. It's similar to the Apple App Store in Google's Play Store, but with less apps, and most of them are quite basic. But there are some unique options, such as the tiny GoPro remote app, invaluable in certain situations, because your watch transforms into a fully functional remote for the action camera. And yes, it works with the latest GoPro Hero 12 as well. Should you want to explore and analyze more, go through the Zep app sections. The interface is getting better and smoother each and every time there's an update, enhancements are well notable, and it has slowly transformed into one of the most reliable wearable companions. Zep also have worked on the battery optimization for Android, and it's no longer among the top consumers on my battery list. In short, the software ecosystem is close to perfect given the hardware resources that the smartwatch provides. But, just as every other piece of tech, there are certain features you might not enjoy that much. The fact that Zep Pay is not as effective as Google Pay and Apple Pay, the inability to sideload more advanced apps compatible with Wear OS or Watch OS, the lack of LTE variation and the absence of wireless charging. Most of the high-end smartwatches are adopting such kind of charging technology lately, but given the 14-day cycles over here, I don't think this is too big deal breaker because even if you go out for a vacation and you use the smartwatch actively, if you stay away from always on display, most likely by the end of your vacation you would still have some battery juice left and that really is amazing. Other than that, I believe this represents the smartwatch 
that we have all dreamt about. Like it has fantastic battery life, it has excellent performance, a lot of apps, the ability to make contactless payments, the ability to store music locally and you can reproduce the music later on using Bluetooth headset. You can make phone calls, not relate though. So given the tiny drawbacks that it has, I believe Amazfit Balance is the almost perfect smartwatch of 2023 and I'm really curious to find out whether you agree to this statement or not so I think we can carry on the conversation below the video in the comment section also below the video in the video description area you can find some more information about the product link to order it and through that supporting the channel at no additional cost to you and I guess you can find a way to stay in touch at least by subscribing giving us a like and I really hope to see you in the next episodes. My name is Michael, wish you a fantastic day, take good care, see you soon, bye!